Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I am super excited to tell you guys that we have gotten the third classified document from Netmarble announcing my favorite X Men, Jean Grey. And also, my real favorite, Wolverine. That's right, guys, James Howlett. So, what can we say about these two characters? Well, aside from my burning passion and desire to play with Wolverine and also to a lesser extent Jean Grey there is some takeaway from these reveals and there is kind of a pattern developing that people have been talking about that I want to get to a little bit later regarding the mutant power level but taking a look at Wolverine and Jean Grey what can we assess well for a large part of the community they were surprised to find out that James is actually quite short yes Wolverine is not a towering menace He's a whirling dervish. He's a tiny man standing at about 5'3", but he's a beast. He's a tank, 300 pounds, will probably be the combat hero that we didn't really need with the advent of Moon Knight and Hobo Fist and Agent Venom, but we'll take it in the rare event that he becomes a speed hero. Kid Kaiju, kiss your sweet ass goodbye. Metaphorically speaking, kiss your notebook goodbye, actually. Let's edit that and take that out in, uh, in post, guys. So, Wolverine's mutant skills, Wild Claw, yes please, Adamantium Blitz, super yes please, X-Slash, Berserker Slice, Salami Boys, and Weapon X. Weapon X, if you guys aren't, you know, familiar with, reminds me of the uniform that maybe one day we'll get, where Logan has no shirt, he's got that big kind of helmet doohickey on him, and he's got all those wires and kind of electrode type thingies hanging down from... Uh, the back, he's got something over his face, and uh, that was when he escaped the facility into the snow, into Canada. Anyways, guys, that's amazing. In addition, powers and abilities, healing factor, better than Gwenpool, better than Mantis, my neighbors seem to think so, adamantium claws, of course, and super senses. Now, what super senses is going to mean, whether it's going to be my neighbors making some kind of weird whistling noise, or whether it's going to be something like guaranteed dodge. I'm not sure. I don't think so because as we know, Wolverine is not the type to dodge incoming attacks. He's the type to take it on the chin and then give you back double what you gave him. But we'll have to wait and see. A little bit more interestingly, Jean Grey is bracketed as Phoenix. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Phoenix, she is kind of the most powerful or one of the most powerful mutant being celestial energy things in the fucking Marvel Universe. She's a badass, to say the least. Like, we're talking power levels rivaling or exceeding the strongest native tier twos that we have in this game right now. I'm talking Odin, I'm talking Dormammu, Doctor Strange. If the power level from the comics and stuff is reflected accurately in this game. And as we've seen with a lot of native tier twos, Thanos, Odin, Dormammu, Doctor Strange, they are. Uh, those characters do have a heavy price tag because they're so powerful. The Black Order, not so much, besides Thanos. However, the bracket could be a misnomer. We could just be looking at this as the, the, the way that she's described and not necessarily the full extent of her powers. However, if we go a little bit deeper and we look at the mutant skills, we have Firebird, which is another word for a phoenix, if you want to describe it to a baby. You have Phoenix Embrace, which sounds very warm and fuzzy. Bonds of Destiny, we all know what that means. Phoenix Descent, coming up, coming down, and then Phoenix Awaken. Uh, I'm gonna be the first to put it out there. Phoenix Awaken is probably gonna be the most badass looking skill in the game. It's going to rival Doctor Strange's self buff of like, you know, 80% all attack and uh, all speed and crit rate and all that good stuff as far as how much uh, buff it gives him. Uh, and you know the, the flexibility that it gives that character but I'm just saying and then under powers of, and abilities we have telepathy which we know she has telekinesis yes and then we have Phoenix Force so at least outwardly Netmarble is tying Jean Grey very closely to her Phoenix kind of not persona but to the Phoenix character that we also know whether this means that Jean Grey will be native tier 2 whether this means that Jean Grey will be paywall or uh, super OP OP is yet to be seen. However, this does springboard into my next discussion, which is about mutant power levels. To date, every single card that has been released has had a mutant power level in the top right-hand corner. A lot of people have given this some discussion and have tried to decipher what these different levels mean based on what we know 
uh, from each character and also how it relates to what we know in the comics. However, it's quite convoluted. The ones that we do see from the ones that Netmarble has released basically look, make it look like all of the male characters are betas and then all of the female characters are alphas except for Jean Grey who is our first Omega level mutant. So Storm and Rogue have been classified thus far as alphas and then Cyclops, Beast and Wolverine have been classified as betas. Now, obviously I don't think that's referring to their gender because Jean Grey is a woman. However, it could be referring to a couple of things. Now, although there are variations on what the um, power levels or what the uh, mutant levels in terms of power actually mean, there are variations, different um, writers, different Earths even, um, the general consensus is that it's referring to both the power level of the mutant and the type of power that they house. So powers that you can tap into and control wholly will maybe get a higher scaling than powers that you cannot necessarily control or powers that can't be used on a more global scale. So while Wolverine is an extremely powerful mutant as we know, and he can b defeat almost any mutant in one-on-one -on -one combat, he can't fight the whole world simultaneously with his claws. However, someone like, let's say, Iceman, could potentially wreak havoc on the entire climate of the world were he to focus his powers enough because just the nature of his powers, no pun intended, has a global reach, whereas Wolverine's powers will never have that kind of global reach unless he started killing world leaders, but obviously that's not going to happen. So that is one way of interpreting their power levels uh, as Netmarble has set it out. Another way of interpreting it is farmability. And this is a very interesting thought that a lot of, that a few people have put forward. Potentially, the betas and the alphas will be farmable in some way. Perhaps the betas will be farmable through story missions. The alphas will be farmable through special missions because special missions are obviously much more restricted in their farmability than story missions. And maybe the omegas will be native tier two so they can't farm for them at all. Or maybe they will be paywall, so you have to farm with them with daddy's credit card. We have to wait and see. I don't want to put a lot of value into the idea that this is referring specifically to their power level. I don't think Netmarble would be crazy enough to put Wolverine below Rogue and Storm and Jean Grey because his popularity far exceeds probably all three of them combined. But we have to wait and see. I just wanted to give you guys, shout out to the motorcycle some speculation and some of the ideas that the community has had so that you can better understand what these mean and also for the asterisk that it really doesn't mean anything yet so don't get too stressed out if you're young or if you're the type of person to get stressed out by these things but i gotta say guys i'm super happy to see wolverine i do want him to get his brown uniform as a as a as a look later on i would love for him to get his old man logan uniform as well but the possibilities now are endless, guys. We have some of the most iconic characters coming to this game, and I could not be happier, and I hope you can join me in that level of elation. In addition, guys, I wanted to lay a couple more things on you guys. We are getting a bunch of sales coming back into the shop. We're getting the uh, five legendary cards for, or six legendary cards for 1,200 crystals with some gold and some clear tickets. We're getting the five uh, five star obelisks with some gold and some clear tickets. We're getting the cast Nord stones. Those are really not that interesting. What may be interesting to you if you're the type of person that is potentially thinking about spending their crystals and wants to upgrade their uniforms, because a lot of people talk about upgrading uniforms, there is going to be a uniform relay sale. And basically what the sale entails is you're going to buy it at level one if you intend to buy it for 350 crystals and then you can unlock the second tier which you then have to purchase for 700 crystals and essentially the more crystals you spend the the higher tier you unlock for a higher tier reward now what i wanted to do and i don't really do this that often i wanted to actually make an analysis of this pack and let you guys know what i think of its overall value in terms of its crystal buying power and what you're getting for your crystals. So I'm not trying to encourage you to buy it, I'm just trying to set out some ideas and do the math for you and give you my opinion on whether or not I think it's useful and it's uh, a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak. So if you take the uh, price tag as a whole, if you count all five levels of this relay, it costs exactly 7,000 7, crystals, excuse me. So 7,000 crystals sounds like a lot. But let's see what you get. For 7,000 crystals, you get 650 bio selectors, which obviously can't be used on paywall characters, A Force, etc. You get 650 Nordstone selectors. 
you get 450 uniform upgrade kits and that's where a lot of people will be buying this for for those uniform upgrade kits that are so painful to farm from the dimension rifts you also get 105 level 5 uniform uh, uh, upgrade uh, xp chips and you can notice that they are different from the level 2 ones because they grant substantially more xp per chip you get 105 of those and then you get almost a million you get 870,000 gold now i went ahead and i did the math for you guys and if you buy all five levels of this relay it will amount to exactly enough bios to get one uniform from rank zero so take one fresh out of the womb out of the mother's behind uniform that you've never upgraded before let's say i take my hulkbuster uniform completely Okay, not the my giant man uniform, completely untouched, no XP, uh, no upgrades, nothing. If I buy all five levels of this relay, I can take this uniform immediately to Mythic. So that's using the uh, XP chips, that's using the uniform upgrade kits, that's using the bio selectors and the Nordstones. I can immediately take this uh, uniform all the way up to Mythic with 30 bios left over, 20 Nordstones left over. Uh, no uniform upgrade kits left over, so it's exactly 450 to upgrade, and you buy exactly 450. However, you are left with about 50,000 extra XP from uniform upgrade chips. So 50,000 XP works out to about 20 chips, so it's not that much, but you are left with some extra chips, and then you're left with about 50,000 extra gold, because it only costs about... 820,000 gold to upgrade the uniform, but you get 870. Looking at it that way, it's really not such a great deal. 7,000 crystals to, to basically just get one mythic uniform is extremely expensive. Not to mention the fact that you don't have any of the optional uniforms necessarily. Now, if you're extremely behind in something like Extreme Alliance Battle, and you really need to catch up, and you want to maybe take Sharon Rogers' uniform from normal to mythic, or Doctor Strange's uniform from normal to mythic, barring the fact that you do need black antimatter instead of bios, it may be a good deal for you, but you're already a blubbery whale if that's the case. For the normal person, I think this deal is terrible for buying all five uh, levels of the relay. However, Upon further analysis, I think the deal is okay. Not good, it's just okay if you only invest in the first two stages of the relay. The first two stages of the relay cost 1,050 crystals in total, so it's a little bit more expensive than a discounted uniform. And for that price, so for just over 1,000 crystals, you get 100 bios, 100 Nordstones, 70 upgrade kits of those purple, of those blue boxes, 15 level 5 XP chips, and 150,000 gold. That total amount equates to two upgrades of a uniform. So taking the uniform from normal to uh, rare, or sorry, from normal to advanced, and then advanced to rare, plus another upgrade of a uniform to, from normal to advanced. So in total, you would get three uniform upgrades, one of them being from advanced to rare, and two of them being from normal to advanced for the price of 1,050 crystals. That is a lot more of a beneficial deal to people who are trying to incrementally improve the stable of their uniforms, and this may be a decent buy for you if you need some small improvements in your ABX scores or maybe in other game modes, and you want to shore up some of your character's stats who have uniforms but that you haven't built up or the uniforms that you've invested in recently from the sale. However, I would not recommend buying above the second stage because from there, the return that you get goes down and it actually more closely mirrors the total number that you need for the upgrades. But the first and the second tier of this relay sale are actually more generous in terms of the upgrade kits and bio selectors that you get. You, give, you get more than you need for the equivalent number of upgrades. So that is the analysis of the relay pack. In general, I'd give it about a three and a half to a four out of 10, not uh, purchasable or not advisable for the general public, but there is some niche for certain players who are in a certain position in the game, myself notwithstanding. So let me know what you guys think of the new characters. Let me know what you think of my analysis of this uh, pack if you want to see more of this kind of content where I look at crystal sales and I give you the breakdown of the math And I give you the breakdown of my opinion on whether it's worth it or not And of course guys if you like what you see I hope to see you again tomorrow and on the twitch live streams, baby because we're only six days away from that 24-hour marathon Take care